Welcome in then to the latest edition of Extra Time. Ali Shaka here with us in the studio. We also welcome to the programme Frank LeBeouf and a very, very smug Julien Laurent. Congratulations, oh, Jules, hi. who has won our uh, Premier League Fantasy League. Oh. Oh. Am I? Uh, oh, have oh, I? I didn't have know. Oh. Oh. I didn't have anything prepared. Hey. Hey. Oh, 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 I saw <laughs> Yes, yes, Dan, yes, Daniel. Yes, Julian Daniel. Laurent. I can't find. Where, are you, where did you finish? I can't find you in the, <laughs> in the table. I, know, I, got, I got distracted. A very busy year. <laughs> time, time for that. And so on. <laughs> Come on. It's the word humility even in the French dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> You've got him up top. You're sure well. about. <laughs> uh, oh, very good. Well done. And why are you wearing that, Frank? Any particular reason? What I'm wearing right yeah, now? Yes. I don't know why. Why? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just, uh, just the pleasure of it. I mean, I, I never heard you, you know, criticizing or commentating in a nice way. Archie's sometimes, you know, jacket that he's wearing. You know, why you you you, you fall on me and not on him? Every time he's on the interviews, he has stupid jackets, and I never heard you sing it. Because I'm not as close to Archie as I am you, Frank. I consider you a colleague, oh, and therefore okay, I okay. feel so it's, it's okay. Better to, so you are saying that it's better to not be too close to you. Exactly, because otherwise you open doors to criticism oh. and all sorts. So be distant. We consider okay, okay. Archie. We consider Borel Archie. Oh, you're a friend, but Archie. Uh. I don't really have a relationship with Archie. Oh. I have with Frank, where I feel like some people can say I have to, I have to warm to people. People have to oh. warm to me. Oh, Ali right. didn't speak to me for the first three years we worked together. <laughs> oh well, okay. I'm, 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 I'm barely, I'm barely doing <laughs> it now. I'm barely doing it now. <laughs> By the way, was that music like a commando type? Yeah, kind of yeah, ramble. Yeah, yeah, like kind of yeah, ramble yeah, music. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Predator, oh, a little yeah, bit of yeah. predator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What do you do with your teeth there, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's get on with this. Nothing. What will Arsenal forever regret Nothing. more? Playing for a draw at the Etihad or dropping points to 10 men Fulham at home? Jules, you're all over Arsenal. What will they regret more? Uh, not, not the draw at the Etihad. I don't think so. Um, yeah, the draw against Fulham early in the season, really at the start of the season, maybe, I think more the away defeat at Fulham, where they took the lead after five minutes and then and then disappeared and mm -hmm. stopped, stopped playing completely. I think there's those games, when you look at the five defeats, not not the one that, the only one that Frank saw, but the actually five, the five ones that happened <laughs> this season for Arsenal. The West Ham one at home, where the XG was super high, West Ham scored two goals, two shots on target. One of those games, City had some, obviously, and when you look at City's result, by the way, against the top six, it's only two wins in ten for City against the other, wow. other teams in the top six. But they build their success in, in, the, in the games against all the other teams. So below top six until the end, only one draw, one defeat, and then all the rest is, is a win every time. So you always have regrets about anything, whatever level you play at. You always, there's always a game where you could have done better, something that went against you in another game. So I'm not sure you can, you can see it that way. But yeah, certainly some of those games, they will feel like they should have done better. It's a low blow, wasn't it? Your fellow countryman, Frank. I'm going to go at you for no reason. Disappointing. <laughs> I think their one regret was letting Shaka into the Villa game. That would probably do it. So let me see. I, I've been there. 95, 96, last game of the season, just similar. You regret every single thing. You think back to every goal you've conceded, every chance missed. You relive every single moment of the season, just wondering what could I have done differently? Should I have kicked this goal, kick up the left-hand side instead of the right? Honestly, right now, the Arsenal players are torturing themselves, reliving every single moment all season long. When does that end? About 2024 20, was that? Never. 30 never. years later. Oh, never. That's ended for you now. I've, I've, just about, I've just about gotten over it, Dan. No, Last week. What about the FA Cup final? <laughs> no, it's still, well, it's still got another 10 years to go on that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. That's still. I don't sense you're really all that stressed, Shaq. Oh, I'm stressed, Daddy. No, I don't. I'm, it's, it's inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's inside. Yeah, it's very much <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, it. You've internalized it <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Frank. Can you give some love to Caicedo? Had a rough start to his life at Chelsea, but he's been great for months now and not getting the recognition he should. He deserved that goal today. He, of course, scored from the halfway line today. Yeah, fantastic goal. Um, yeah, he had a very good end of the season, but because of the, the Chelsea season, you know, you cannot reward him the way you should by his, uh, 
his good performances at the end of the season. The start was very poor, but at the, you know, like the others, I would say. And uh, Fernandez and him has been uh, bought for a, a big, big amount of money. We are talking about one and one million, one hundred thirty million uh, pounds, and uh, it's a lot of money. So you expect something big. It ne quite never happened. Uh, his, uh, his position on the field is also difficult to. Uh, to show all your talent and you have to have people who can recognize and have knowledge about that uh, to, uh, to see if the guy is performing or, uh, or not. The end of the season was better, but like the team and the finishing that they had at, the, at, the, at this season. But we need confirmation, a big time confirmation, because what we saw with his previous club was better than what we saw this season. But no doubt that the talent is there and the confidence is growing and um, it, let's say that it, he needed to settle and he's, now he can feel at home, so he's going to give his best next season. Oh, this is such a Jules question. He probably wrote it. OK. Enough with the Premier League. Jules, we all know how much talent comes out of the academies in France as a whole, but Paris specifically. What are the reasons for this? Is it coaching, talent, spotting, youth development of some sort? <laughs> really, what do you attribute this to? Yeah, I thank my dad for sending that question <laughs> and uh, for the question being picked up. <laughs> uh, it's great. I mean, at the, uh, at the Qatar World Cup, for example, Paris had 30 players in, in, in different teams uh, playing at the World Cup who came from the Paris and the Paris area, the banlieue and etc. I think the next city was Sao Paulo with 12 and then London with 8. It's just, I think there's a, there's a street football culture to start with, like seriously now. The grassroots and structure as well within Paris, but also in the rest of France, but it's very strong, very different than what you can see in England, for example. And I think when you have 12 million people or more, the, the hotbed of talent is, is there a lot. And I think there's a lot of really great grassroots teams, grassroots clubs who do a lot of amazing work at youth level, like Paris FC, like Red Star, but plenty others all around Paris, central Paris as well. And you also have the ENF Clairefontaine, so the regional academy where the best kids from Paris go there, you try all, you get there after four very difficult rounds, the 23 best of that generation go there and they play football every day. They go to school and play football. And then this is often where some of the best come out. So Thierry Henry and Kylian Mbappe and Nicolas Anelka, all of them went to the, the Clairefontaine Academy. So I think all of that put together. And again, I think the street, the street football culture is very important there. That's probably one of some of the main reasons why Paris produces so many great talents. It was definitely a Jules question. Definitely a Jules Could question. Good fantasy football as well, the French. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I heard they really produce yeah. good talent for fantasy <laughs> Don't football. Don't bring that up. Oh, God. Pete's in my ear going, oh, that's Frank. I'm not going to get another answer from someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to move on. <laughs> oh, I want to go home. <laughs> Uh, now that the Germany job and presumably Bayern will be off the table by the time Klopp's one-year hiatus ends, Ali, uh -huh. where are you predicting for his next landing spot? I'd like to see Jurgen Klopp... I would love to see his approach to the game in La Liga. I don't know where that would be and who, who would actually accommodate what he wants to do. But that vertical game that Frank was talking about, with that sort of pace, with that sort of speed, is a different style than what is played in La Liga. And it would be something entirely different. And a personality, by the way, that, you would, that I think La Liga would want to have as part of their product. In fact, anybody. Anybody in the world would want to have Jurgen Klopp, but yeah, from my Spanish perspective, I really think that Jurgen Klopp could change a lot of things in how the game is played, or at the very least, uh, adjust how the game is played in Spain. Final question. Are you surprised how clinically, clinical, effective and composed Gula is, and could he potentially come off the bench and be the game changer in the Champions League final? Me and Shaka, actually, we were with him, weren't we, in California? Mm -hmm. We saw him training like for the first time with Real Madrid. Should have given him a few tips. That's, that was that was the difference. Uh -huh. This is this is <laughs> this is prior to really? you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> prior I, I, to your clearly episode. I overworked myself. Yes. I overstretched myself. You gave a myself. lot of tips. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good day that one. <laughs> <laughs> you seem really excited to give an update after that. <laughs> um, Gula. Yes. Good player, great player, staying at Real Madrid next season or should go out on loan? Well, and, and that's a conversation. And the more he plays and the more he scores goals, the more likely it is that he sticks around. 
My argument would be that, yeah, Brahim Diaz is also playing well. And Kylian Mbappe is coming. And Hendrik. And you still have Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo in place. And it's kind of like you're running out of space. And more importantly, you're running out of time out on the field. So for Arda Guler, I think because of how young he is, the important thing is to play. And if he's going to play consistently, he's probably going to be on loan much more so than if he sticks around. And that's it. We are done. Thank you very much to Frank and to Jules. Uh, just a reminder, the Premier League season may be finished, but we are not. We are still with you every single day of the year, Ooh. of the world, of oh, the universe. What? What? Be sure to stay yeah. with us.